Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here and welcome to the review of the HTC One M9. So the M8 last year was a great device from HTC, and it had built upon the already great M7 from the previous year. However, it did have its flaws, and this year we expected HTC to come out with what would be perceived the perfect smartphone. And the biggest question attached to the M9 is, is it a big enough jump from the M8? So to get the specs out of the way, the HTC One M9 features a 5-inch 1920x1080 resolution 441 PPI display. You've also got an octa-core Snapdragon 810 processor with 3 gigs of RAM, as well as a 20 megapixel rear-facing camera and a 2840 mAh internal battery. It comes in a 32 gigabyte variant only. However, it is expandable up to 128 gigabytes via micro SD. So let's jump right into the design, and it's fair to say that ever since the release of the M7, HTC has always been at the head of the pack in terms of build quality. Once again we see the nicely machined metal construction in which HTC claims hundreds of hours are put into every device. And although it is much reminiscent of the M8, it is really nothing to be complained about. And through the anodization process implemented into the M9, HTC claims that makes the device much more beautiful and less slippery. The device is currently available in a silver and gold model which I have in front of me as well as a darker gunmetal finish compared to last year. And I will admit that the device is still somewhat slippery but not nearly as bad as last year as you now have something to grab onto along the rigid edges. This time around HEC has also moved the buttons over to the side. The power button is located on the same side as the volume rockers which are separated by the way and although it is nice that they moved it away from the top which was pretty hard to reach generally speaking. It would have been nice if HTC had put the volume rockers and the power button on different sides, as I have found myself to accidentally press the wrong button quite often. The device this year does come slightly thicker at 9.61mm thick, but weighs in 3 grams lighter at 157. On the bottom of course you will find your 3.5mm headphone jack and your micro USB port as well as the IR blaster located on the top side. On the front, for the most part, it has stayed pretty much identical to the HTC One M8, and I'm sure a lot of people may have confused that when looking at the two devices side by side. You will once again find your amazing boom sound speakers with surround characteristics, and the front facing camera is located at the same spot, though it has been upgraded to an ultra pixel camera. I've overall been a huge fan of HTC's design and build quality used in their devices over the past few years, and that hasn't changed in the M9. It is beautiful and durable. So now let's move on to the display. The HTC One M9 features a 1920x1080 resolution full HD display with a PPI of 441, so in other words it is the same as the M8, which may have disappointed some people. With nearly every major manufacturer moving over to quad HD displays in the market, it is fair to say that we were somewhat surprised that HTC did not move that direction, especially because of how few changes were made from the M8 to the M9. In HTC's defense however, 1080p displays are still perfectly fine, apps still haven't really been optimized to take advantage of the Quad HD and why not have a better battery life if you can. The display is still very crisp and text still looks great on it, but I guess what you're going to miss here is the pop factor or the wow factor from looking at a Quad HD display, for example on the Samsung Galaxy S6. That being said, the color representation is great, everything looks really vivid and sharp, and I really have no complaints whatsoever of the display used by HTC. But like I mentioned before, it would have been nice for HTC to implement a Quad HD display in this device, not only to future-proof it, but to keep it competitive in the market of Quad HD smartphones nowadays. But now that we have covered most of the hardware, let's move over to the software. The HTC One M9 runs Android 5.0 Lollipop with the Sense 7 skin, one that I had been a huge fan of in the past, dating all the way back to the M7. What I loved about it so much is the visual appeal. Even back a few years ago, HTC has already gone with a flat look in their interface, giving you a good balance between functionality and simplicity. And while some may not prefer that, I was personally a pretty big fan of it. Blink feed is definitely something I use and it is located on the left of your home screen, however if you do not like it, you can also turn that off. The interface is very snappy and responsive as you would expect and by holding on your on screen buttons it will take you to Google Now and there is also a new multi app layout. This card layout is able to show you all your apps at once making it very easy to multitask. One small complaint I do have about Sense though is the app drawer. I kind of prefer having a transparent look to it but with the new colors and themes implemented it actually looks pretty good. 
A new feature that HTC has also implemented into Sense7 is the location-based app drawer. So that allows you to set different apps, whether you're at home, work, or you're out. And as you reach those locations, it will automatically switch to the apps at your convenience. The notification tab for the most part has stayed the same, the quick toggle settings as well, and the settings menu is all very familiar. So I have to say from Sense6 to Sense7, you really don't have many changes, which was totally fine. Aside from some small visual tweaks here and there, the location-based app drawer as well as the ability to add different themes, and also customize the colors to your liking. The gaming experience on the M9 was also very enjoyable. The device itself just feels great in the hand, and probably the factor that contributes most to the gaming experience is its boom sound speakers. It really makes you feel like you're in the game through the surround audio experience. The visual experience was also great and I didn't notice any lag whatsoever and that is to be expected out of the Snapdragon 810 processor. What I did notice though is the device tended to get rather hot at times. Speaking of a great multimedia experience, let's take a look at the boom sound speakers and once again this is a feature that we first saw in the HTC One M7 and it is perhaps one of the biggest reasons to purchase an HTC device. If you're an avid music listener or like to consume a lot of media on your device, you will want these speakers. They give you a nice surround experience with Dolby Audio, they are very loud and completely smack the stereotype that speakers built into smartphones are horrible. And I'm just going to give you a quick listen, but you've got to experience them in person to get the full idea. So now we're back to the good old camera, a category that HTC has seemingly struggled in over the past few years. Being a device that I loved so much all around, a camera was something that I used a lot, therefore it was hard for me to recommend this device to everyone. This year though, HTC did show some hope by finally ditching that ultra pixel technology and putting it over to the front and introducing a 20 megapixel rear facing sensor. But before I show you some of the photos that the M9 took, I want to give you a quick tour of the camera software, which has once again stayed pretty much the same like the rest of Sense 7. But I definitely enjoyed it before and I do once again. The interface is very simple, you have your modes in the circle layout and you can also add some extra features as well that you can download. You also have your settings located on the bottom left corner that allow you to set the ISO, the exposure balance and also the white balance and give you full control over your camera which is nice but for the photos I have taken I have decided to leave them at the automatic mode as that is what most people will be using. So without further ado let's take a look at some of these samples. So looking at the camera samples the photos aren't half bad but they also aren't impressive. It really comes to show that megapixels aren't everything and from a 20 megapixel sensor it doesn't really give me that pop factor that I see on perhaps the Samsung Galaxy S6. The biggest issue with the M9's camera though was its consistency. The exposure was often off as you can see and in some cases the photos were extremely underexposed as well. That being said, I was occasionally able to get some pretty good shots. But generally speaking, the camera was a bit of a letdown and I hope HEC does fix as much as they can through the software. That being said though, the front facing camera did a great job. When it came to 4K video recording however, it was a bigger disappointment. The exposure issues were much more noticeable and the quality it produced just wasn't as sharp as you would expect out of a 4K camera. The exposure seemed to change all over the place and locking the focus didn't do much help as well. But once again, I hope HEC can fix certain things through software. So now let's move on to the battery life. The M9 is a slight bump from last year coming in at 2840 mAh, but some things to keep in mind is the Snapdragon 810 processor. But other than that, everything has stayed pretty much the same for the most part, so I expected the battery life to be the same as well, but that wasn't the case. Instead of expecting to get around 8 hours of use, I was able to get anywhere from 6.5 to 7 hours of use on a full day. But giving HTC the benefit of the doubt, the device did just come out last week and hopefully we will see some software updates fixing the battery issues. Of course, you do also have the ability to switch to ultra power saving mode in case you want to save the little bit of juice you have left and do not have access to the charger, so that allows you to maximize your battery life and use just the major features. And although you can't purchase a rapid charger separately, it would have been nice if HTC had included that with the device like Samsung did. So now it's time to give you guys my final conclusion on the HEC One M9. 
It is clearly the best device that HTC has ever made, but there really isn't enough for me to justify why you wouldn't want to just go buy an M8 and save some money instead of jumping towards the M9. The device is beautiful, durable, has amazing speakers that you won't find on any other device, and a great looking display. But with the camera being such an important part of our everyday lives, it still seems to be a category that HTC struggles in. And although it is an improvement, it still isn't good enough in my opinion. But this has just been my full review of the HTC One M9, and be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below letting me know what you think about this device, and while you're at it, leave a thumbs up as it helps this channel out a bunch. I'll see you all in the next video.